Hey, I'm Anton Bezugloff, and I'm here. Um, I'm a professor of computer science here. I have a PhD in computer science, so that's why it's very um, it's an order for me to to be able to present here. And I'm thankful to Dr. Akim and Dr. Jamar <laughs> for participating in this restoration for making this all happen. So my part here is uh, hidden mark of models, how we switch the model, our human models, and uh, I will first <clears throat> let's talk about the data. It was it like several several months ago we um, discussed it with um, Dr. Jamar that what we can do with this data. Data. This example is a uh, data speed data collected um, March the third, nineteen ninety three, and uh, so far it's just uh, the AM data. So we collected at five AM through ten AM. And what you can see here, x axis is time, and y axis is, is average speed collected at every minute. So um, we can easily identify here some regions of normal driving, right? And then at some point, something started happening, and then we looks like we have some incidents, minor incidents. So the average speed dropped to 40 miles per hour, and uh, Something else happened here, and uh, it recovered by <coughs> 10 o'clock in the morning. So these regions, they kind of naturally push us to think about uh, some stochastic model, like a human Markov model that can switch, right? And uh, of course, when the model is in this state or in this state, we can assume a normal distribution. So, or when, normal, when the model is in this state, we also can assume a normal distribution. So there comes the idea. So here's the idea. We apply a Markov model for identifying regions of normal driving, regions with minor incidents, regions with major accidents. We're going to use our real data for training or fine tuning the Markov model parameters. And uh, <coughs> we're going to feed that Hilde Markov model a five minute interval of um, recent events and ask the model what's going to be the next state, what's going to be the prediction. And depending on the predicted state, we use the proper Arima model. In case you don't know or you forgot what a hidden Markov model is, it's a uh, probabilistic model which has an x state at time t, that uh, state is not observable, it is hidden, and uh, states uh, can, are typically discrete. Yeah, literature says that there are some continuous states, but uh, for that, for our case, we use discrete. Observations can be discrete or continuous. For our case, we use continuous observations. Now, hidden Markov model can be described by three probability distributions. Distribution of the initial distribution of the state, then distribution of a state of the next state given the state and the distribution of the observation variable given the state variable. Here's a picture of the Markov model. So you see that the state at time one the state at time one kind of has an effect on the state at time two, has an effect on the state three, four and state of time one has an effect on observation. Um, there's one interesting phenomenon about the hidden Markov model is um, that since we cannot observe a state, like we don't have evidence on state x2, for example, then it does not block the information flow from uh, observation one to observation three. Okay? So if we, when we don't know what the state here is, then an additional evidence on O3 has an effect on, the, on the X1, X2, X3, X4. This is a very important feature in the market models that we actually exploit. Okay. All right. Now, how do we prepare an HMM? The HMM can be trained. That's a good thing about it. And the training algorithm is Baum Welsh, which is a form of expectation maximization. It's pretty much the same expectation maximization algorithm, but just adjusted for a human model. 
here, for this application, we assume four states. Quite informally, we call them like major accident, minor incident, instability, and normal driver. You can call them the way you like, but it's just our informal definition. All right. We also assume that the observations are distributed normally. So one normal distribution per state. As a start in the Markov model, before we actually train it, we picked this. So for state one, we assume the mean speed is 10 and the variance is 1. For state two, we assume mean speed is 20, variance is 1, 40, 60. Now, when we run the training, so when we um, show that model some uh, March 3rd data, the model actually readjusted the parameters. So now, for state one, we have the mean 19.6 and a huge variance, 53.5. Right? For state two, and uh, state two is our minor incident, right? minor incident. The mean is 39.3 and the variance is low, which is good. For state three, mean is 56.5, also high variance. And state four, normal driving, very good, 61.8 for the mean and uh, very low variance, 2.6. Okay. So if we look at it again, that's pretty much the same table. But now, I just put on that like, March the 3rd, I put the means for state one, state two, and state four. I didn't put a state three because of such high variance, it really doesn't make much sense. But you can see that model, at least for state two and state four, kind of recognize what state is. Now, after we trained the model, we got a very, very conservative model. Basically, it doesn't want to jump to other states. So the probability of staying in the same state is 95% for states one, two, and four. Now, state three, remember that's instability. And 20% of cases wants to jump to other states. Okay. So basically how we do, how we predict the state or the speed at time t. Run the test on the data that was not used <coughs> for training. So we used March the 3rd for training and we used uh, other data sets for, for experiments. Use five previous observations. T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, T minus four, T minus five. So basically five minutes and apply the forward-backward algorithm. Very well-known algorithm for hidden market models. Using that algorithm, we find the probability distribution of the model to be at state i, given this set of observations. Pick the most probable state at time t, and use the correspondent to real model. I'm not going to take bread from uh, Dr. Jamar by explaining what our remote models are. <laughs> Thank you. Is, um, um, so under this actually, um, HMM, there are other you know, simple uh, models uh, for online, both online or offline detection for the change points. Uh, cumulative summation for quality control, you know, expectation maximization. Uh, so we use here slightly different uh, logic in uh, HMM, and then there's actually a new one. Um, it's actually Bayesian change point detection for offline is quite unknown, but the online change point detection is uh, recently also being developed. Um, the machinery, obviously, what do we do? Uh, machinery and the exper experiments, what do we do? We use actually plain ARIMA models for our prediction. And then, uh, or estimation for it, um, and then also the IMO models with the HMM for the prediction of the uh, speed. Uh, online detection then uh, is actually done by HMM. Uh, simply, IMO model, uh, most of people recognize that it's just uh, if we have a um, time series model with the uh, Autoregressive P, uh, and we have a difference in B, and then the uh, moving average Q. That is actually uh, the representation uh, with the uh, back shift uh, operator. 
and the uh, simple Arima forecasting would be done by this equation uh, in um, if we actually represent the uh, ultra aggressive infinite form, uh, using this equation we can actually uh, find the uh, pi scale, those are the parameters uh, uh, then this is basically uh, first three we have the parameter for pi then we have actually depending on the uh, theta one and theta two All right, here is how we did, we, did we do actually the uh, experiments and comparisons. Um, Anton actually have sent, uh, he has sent many data. Uh, for this, uh, I used, Anton trained the data, I trained the um, hidden Marco uh, on February 18th uh, to find the probabilities. And then uh, I used those to basically predict the um, speeds uh, for March 3rd and then also I give uh, March 1 uh, then you're going to see that uh, they are quite different actually in terms of uh, day, uh, the incidents and the incidents. Uh, for plain Arima, um, I used March 02, there's no incident on March 02, so it basically gives a normal uh, prediction. Uh, primary prediction. Uh, here, um, actually all of them uh, kind of optimized, I can say, it's done by automatically Arima are based on the ARC um, criteria. Uh, basically, we select uh, what is the uh, optimal market, although it may not really kind of uh, reflect the true optimal, uh, since we know the simplicity is also important for models. Um, what we can see, um, basically, we can explain uh, the, uh, we can use the ARIMA with uh, no difference in uh, ultra base of one and then the moving average two. So in that case, we have one parameter for ultra of uh, five, uh, nine, uh, 0 0.95, and then theta one and theta two. They are quite similar, actually, for AM and PM for plain arima. And for AM and PM, and having this state, we uh, predict, actually, uh, estimated the parameters for all arimas. Uh, we have one different, actually, uh, for the second state. Uh, it does not actually have a moving average component. And then, uh, more or less, actually, uh, the mean values, intercept values, agrees with Anton, actually, March 3rd, uh, you know, uh, HMM uh, kind of uh, trained values for the state averages. So having these, with the probabilities that Anton generated with the hidden Markle models, we basically updated or switched accordingly. So when we have um, the probability uh, observed, then we just change uh, state one, the prediction model. That just uh, activated and that does the prediction. And if we observe state two with the probability given with the HMM, then we, we do basically the prediction uh, with, the, uh, with this model. And depending on the AM and PM, likewise here, we have PM. But obviously, the question, important question here, are these our primitive values, are, do they agree with we, when we have multiple days? That's also important that we have to think about it. And um, you know, uh, if they are more, more or less the same, and then the, the models are agreeing with it parameter-wise, then actually we can generalize a little bit the, the model. Uh, this is basically how can we have a bias. Uh, uh, it would be easier to show it here. So you know, if the model is showing the mean value here, then when it changes, obviously that is actually kind of generating the error. Um, when we did these predictions for much. Uh, three um, AM data, when we have these major incidents, uh, we see that the, uh, the our model is basically pretty much following the trend and then detecting the shifts and then uh, revising the model accordingly. When Arima is actually kind of being a little bit late because it's not really able to uh, adapt it that quickly, then it generates the errors. Uh, when we don't have anything, uh, they react basically the same. So we don't have any changes, and also our HMM model is kind of suggesting us to stay in uh, state four, then it goes like that. And this is also, uh, we have an incident here, however, it just actually um, increased the variance, uh, rather than the mean is also advanced a little bit, but uh, variance isn't quite, uh, that's the main component. Uh, but uh, basically this model is just also, uh, both of them actually uh, adapting here. And then we have the same analysis for the March one, 
um, is actually similar to the PM of uh, March 3rd. And then we, these are basically the preliminary reading, uh, results. Uh, when we have March 3 AM, those uh, big uh, major incidents, then we have the saving of 72% uh, in mean square errors and then uh, absolute mean errors, 54% uh, savings. Uh, for the PM, uh, only we have the variance changing and the mean level a little bit changing, then we don't have much type of improvement. Uh, for the AM data, similar behavior. Uh, we have actually similar uh, savings. When we have PM data, it's almost like, um, uh, they, they're almost like same. And uh, all over here, there's a negative saving here, but uh, that is really, uh, it can be, we didn't really kind of test this uh, multiple times might be kind of also uh, randomness. Uh, so we have to do actually test this uh, for multiple data sets. Um, but uh, you know, uh, for simple analysis and preliminary results, we have actually these savings. So that's it. Uh, do you have any questions on that too? Like them. Yes. So uh, my question is, uh, I have two questions. One is, how do you uh, account for weather patterns. For example, if you have a, a snowy day, mm -hmm. heavy snow day, <clears throat> downpour, or rainy day, I know you look at the incidences, yes. the type of accidents, or somebody has a, a, a flat time. So how do you account for a day where there was a heavy downpour of snow? We, we don't really kind of differentiate the incident types, actually, that the, the, the study that I talked about in the background. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were talking about that actually. They they like to actually differentiate those states why they are happening. But here we don't really uh, focus on that area. We just we just identify the state. That state can be obtained by uh, incident, can be obtained by weather change, anything really. But um, if it ha I mean, as you can see, um, actually the data set it has a database of incidents and then weather you know kind of reports and everything. However. Um, we only identify by like, in the training stage, identify those states. So we have four major, major states, and then we adapt to it. Okay. So it, it also, I'm talking. I'm also thinking about different times of the year, mm -hmm. not just what, about weather, but uh, seasonality is there. Seasonal, yeah. Yes. So, so is the model going to be able to predict? And I don't know whether uh, that's something you guys have looked at, but let's say. The characteristics of driving parties in one day can that be ever duplicated or normalized for another day? Even if, let's say, you look at uh, third of March, I saw that it's going to be online. So you're right. I mean, these these are going to be done. You know, it's going to be adaptive. So we'll be catching those actually. Oh. And the model will be catching those. Uh, they're going to be adaptive. Yeah, I can, I can try to add something to it. Like we we can. <laughs> Yeah. Um, when we have a probabilistic model, we can always add the time and weather parameter to it, obviously. Yes. And uh, we are also thinking of adding uh, the volume, right? Traffic. Yeah, we didn't actually, yeah, we didn't uh, work on the volume data, flow data, actually. Uh, and the, from the flow data, we can actually get a little bit more information regarding these, you know, uh, type of incidents and then maybe we're going to put a probabilistic nature. When, when the flow gets to some, some certain point, then higher probability that something bad may happen. Yeah. So Bayesian actually kind of change points, you know, they do actually that kind of inference. So that based on the run length, actually they they like to infer whether it's, you know, there's going to be the likelihood of the accident or incident. Okay. They have that nature. Yeah. Any other questions for the if they don't have another question, then I have another. Uh, we live, uh, those of us who live on the northeast, right? Uh, they are building a whole new uh, a second um, Sun Hill Mall on the other side, close to 77. Mm -hmm. And now we just discovered that very soon we are going to have congestion because everybody wants to go to, to enjoy those facilities. How will something like this, although you predicted something, and then let's say in, in, in three months' time, there's a whole different dynamics. Exactly. That's actually that's the that's the, uh, the idea behind it. So you cannot really you know fit a model then just leave it like that. Um, I mean they have to be adaptive in that case. You know, based on the data, you have to really kind of uh, having that information. You have to adapt your parameter values and so forth. Uh, 
to be reflected. But uh, these are really for freeway kind of you know, application needs, uh, for variable method signs and so on. Thank you.